Thank you so much again. I'm really excited to get to know you and what you kind of do as the day in the life as an AI engineer. So would you want to introduce yourself really quickly? Yeah, sure. So my name is Elle. I graduated from UC Berkeley in 2018. I studied CS, Applied Mathematics, and Statistics. And after graduating, I've been working at Two Sigma on the AI engineering team. Um, so it's been around two years now. And then I actually recently switched teams to a team that's working more on news data. Awesome. So you mentioned that you went to UC Berkeley. Were there any classes in particular that kind of led you to a specific path since you did do a couple different things? Um, it's not just one specific major. So was there yeah. anything in particular that kind of led you to AI versus something else? I think a lot of it was more by luck or happenstance. So okay. I think I've always wanted to do something mathy. Obviously, like AI, machine learning, big data, those things were buzzwords, um, even when I was a freshman. And I think freshman summer, I knew that I should get a job somewhere, but I wasn't exactly sure where. So I just kind of applied to this research experience for undergraduates program, um, which just lets uh, like undergrads do research at another university. Um, so I applied to that and they kind of gave me a project that was deep learning based. So I think one thing followed another. So after getting that research position, I ended up getting more positions in a similar topic, I guess, which was, which just happened to be machine learning. Okay, cool. Did you do any internships in college as well? Or was that just like your first um, experience in AI and things like that? So that was my first experience. Um, I guess it was a research internship. And then okay. I also interned at IBM Research, which is another, I guess, like research internship during the summer. Uh -huh. And then uh, I interned at Two Sigma my junior year summer. And then after college, I interned again, um, also uh -huh. in a research lab. So okay. I guess more of like research internships throughout. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So what would you say is a day in the life for you? Do you work on a team of other AI engineers or is it kind of a cross-functional team where there's different people on the same team as you? How does this typically look like? I think my day in the life looks pretty similar or exactly the same as any other software engineer. Okay. Um, so I think it's just the difference between the domain that you're working with. So right. I guess for my team and maybe the firm in general, what I ended up working on was more of building a platform so that people can use AI and machine learning. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't actually end up working too much on building the models like myself, um, which I guess is another aspect of AI engineering. Um, it just depends on, I guess, like which company, which team you're on. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, I think a lot of it is just working, you know, your nine to five. Um, for me, it's more like 10 to six, really. Uh, but yeah, so like coding throughout the day, um, occasionally talking to, you know, the people who are going to use whatever you're going, going to build. And in this case, it's quantitative researchers at Two Sigma, mm -hmm. um, or I guess whoever else, really, it could be other net engineers as well. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it is just coding, maintaining code, testing, um, mm -hmm. Occasionally reading papers and making sure that, I guess, your system and the technologies that you're using are up to date. Um, but yeah, I think it looks pretty much the same as what you would expect if you were working at Google as a regular software engineer. I see. Okay. So then yeah. do you guys also work in sprints or is it a different way that you structure your weeks? I think that really depends on the team. Uh, so on my first team, I or I guess I've technically had three teams if you count my internship team at uh -huh. Two Sigma. But so my internship, we had no sprints, I guess no like formal organization to what we're doing. So uh -huh. that was, I guess, one mode of doing things. And then my second team, which was AI engineering is more of like weekly sprints. So that was pretty, I guess, I don't know if neat is the right word, but um, yeah, there's just like more structure to what you're doing for yeah. day to day. And then currently I have more of a two week sprint, which is a little less rigid than the one week sprint, but there's still that structure and you know what you're doing or supposed to be doing and finishing. Okay. 
So what would you say are some important skills in your role? Are there any particular skills that you say would be different than a regular software engineer that doesn't work with AI or in the financial technology field? Um, or is it like sort of the similar kind of skills that you would need? I think a lot of people who are working in engineering or research, they don't know too much about finance before actually working okay. there. So that's really not something that you need from the get-go, although it's an important skill to develop if that's important for your job. Um, it's not always important if you're in like the engineering organization. Mm -hmm. And then I guess moving on from that for more like technical science STEM, um, I guess skills, you basically want to know the basics of math, which is something that you don't always need to know for software engineering. Um, Obviously, you need to know like the foundations of software engineering, coding. Um, you should know, you should be very familiar and comfortable with production grade models um, so that you can, you know, like deploy and test things at scale and also make sure that they're running <laughs> from day to day, even if you're not like constantly watching it. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's also important to have a basic understanding of statistics if you're actually working with the models themselves. Mm -hmm. And just, I guess you don't need it in order to deploy the model or even to test the model, but you should know statistics if you want to like later on help develop the models or experiment on the models and be able to say something reasonable about whatever you're building. Yeah, that makes sense. So what are some of the things that you like about your, the role that you're in? And is there anything that you find particularly challenging? So I guess some of the highlights and lowlights of your current role? I think for AI in general, I think it's very hyped <laughs> a lot of times. So I think that, I think I mentioned this earlier, but I am really interested in mathematics um, and kind of like solving puzzles, basically. And I think for... A lot of the job when you're doing engineering in general and also AI engineering is yeah. iterating on small things so that you can make inter incremental improvements to whatever you're doing. So mm -hmm. in that sense, less creative, I guess, than I originally thought and intended. Okay. So I think that's like for the dislikes, but mm -hmm. I do like that, you know, I'm able to actually use my brain like I'm not I'm not just like creating spreadsheets um I do yeah I think I like the fact that it is mathematical and you do have the opportunity to read papers and implement them that's cool and what would you say are some of the opportunities in AI or machine learning do you see the field changing at all in the next couple of years or um like you said maybe you could elaborate more on the part where it's said overhyped like what kind of things do you mean by that? Yeah, so I don't know if you've seen a meme on Facebook, but it it's kind of just like um, like everyone else is freaking out about AI taking over the world, kind of like ex machina <laughs> type thing. And then in reality, like um, like when you're doing the research, your AI basically spits out something that's like completely illogical or like doesn't make sense at all. So yeah. I think when you're actually working on it, you realize that there's, it's just very difficult to get things the way that you need it or want it to be um, in the end. Okay. So in that sense, I think there's a lot of room to improve on AI and machine learning, which also gives people a lot of opportunities to improve. So I think the like hot fields right now are probably... Uh, like self-driving cars, computer vision, um, security. So I don't know if you've heard like um, fooling uh, deep learning systems. So like you give it an image of a panda, but then the AI thinks that it's a fish or something like that. Um, so like <laughs> basically preventing things like that from happening. And obviously it can be something worse. Like it could be a normal person's fate or not a normal person but like a person <laughs> who's not a terrorist um but then is like uh i don't know when when you put it through a facial recognition system they might say that this person is a terrorist when they're not um 
So issues like that, and also issues with, I guess, biases in the data themselves and biases within the algorithms. So mm -hmm. preventing an AI from saying, oh, I see a person in a kitchen, this person must be a woman. Uh, like, obviously, it could be both a man and a woman, or I guess, um, other. If, so, yeah, I think that there's a lot of opportunities within AI to one, improve, I think, like the baseline accuracy of difficult tasks, and also nebulous tasks to kind of specify in a experimental and rigorous way for research and mm -hmm. also there's a lot of room to improve that won't cause social harm to people especially if it's used within like the judicial system right. or um in surveillance that makes sense yeah so that the ai and machine learning that we create is ethically responsible as well and like it's not just considering like oh how fast it runs but also understanding like the impacts of it yeah 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 so do you see AI machine learning as something that will be more for people who have graduate or advanced degrees? Um, I know that you said that you only have an undergraduate degree. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, are there a lot of opportunities for people who are just graduating from undergraduate degree? Or do you see that most people in this field do have advanced degrees? I think it's not so much that you can't do or make machine learning models, if you only have an undergraduate degree, mm -hmm. I think it's more that you're competing with people who have literally spent like five to seven years of their life just focusing on machine learning. And that's mm -hmm. all they're doing, which is what you would be doing if you have a more like advanced degree. Um, so you can get this expertise by working in the industry or, you know, doing your own projects, although, you know, you're not paid to do your own projects. So most likely you would have to do it in industry. And it's kind of the chicken and egg problem where if you're in industry already and you don't have the expertise, but you want to gain the expertise, but you need more expertise <laughs> in order to gain the expertise. It's not, it's not so much that you can't find a position. I think it's just a lot more difficult because there's more competition, especially relative to where you are versus where someone else is. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I guess last question for you. Are there any last words of advice for anybody looking to go into a similar role as you or um, at a similar company? Um, are there any classes that they should be taking in college if they study something similar to math or computer science? Um, are there any other resources outside of school that you would recommend? Things like that. Yeah. So I think if you don't study statistics, I think it's good to have a fundamental knowledge of statistics. And if you don't study math, I think it's good to <laughs> study something like uh, discrete math and linear algebra. Um, yeah, basically, I think most of machine learning is vector math. <laughs> um, so yeah, just like be very well versed in that. And then if you, yeah, like apart from courses, I think that doing I guess your own projects on the side would be helpful and also doing research projects with professors, not necessarily in the computer science department, but also in like business, um, psych, um, any department. I think that a lot of professors are looking into basically using ML. So they really just need a lot of computer science students who want to do machine learning. Um, like I think when I was an undergrad, there was a graduate student who was telling me that they were collaborating with the art history department on basically classifying art history photos. Um, so I think that was pretty fun and that's something that you can do, but not a lot of people, I, I guess, think of um, because it's not like straightforward. Oh, this, you can apply CS in yeah. these departments. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's so true because I've had, professors from, um, since I'm doing a dual degree in business and computer science, some professors in my business school, they've asked me and other computer science students if they will be interested in um, working on a research project with them. And then they could be doing something completely different like accounting and they still need like technology students or somebody who's interested with data analysis or machine learning, computer science stuff. I think 
a lot of professors are interested in working with students. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I definitely see that. I think there's a lot of, I think I, I heard this somewhere, I forgot where, but it's like, oh, all fields now are just CS plus X, where like X is the field that you're actually working in, but then you're applying CS to that field. So yeah, it seems like everything is converging to this applied CS <laughs> kind of field. So do you think your, uh, is, was it a triple major that you did? Or was that just you said you did statistics, math, and computer science in school? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually, um, I went in as a engineering, math, and statistics major, which is one major. But then there was a course that I didn't really, I didn't want to take, which is thermodynamics. <laughs> so I, yeah, I had this like very bad teacher for like um, my first two physics class. And I didn't want to take thermo with him for another semester. And also I was like, oh, I'm not really going to need a lot of the other classes that I was, I was required to take basically for that major. So mm -hmm. I was like, might as well just break, break it into um, electrical engineering, computer science, which is like the engineering concentration that I originally was thinking of doing. Okay. Um, but then in the middle, I was, I, also realized that I wanted to do math and stats, which is why I like re-added the majors. And then that ended up being, <laughs> I guess, a triple major instead of the one major. That's actually really cool. I think you're like the first person that I know who has done like three different majors at once. I'm like, <laughs> wow, I want to know the reasoning behind this. <laughs> well, thank you so much again for doing this. I learned a lot and I think you gave some really good advice for people who are interested in this field. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for having me.